All right, so let's do an example of Newton's method to approximate the value of a pretty simple second-degree polynomial. But before we get started, uh, if you need some refresher or you just want to better understand uh, the basis of Newton's method, what is Newton's method, what is it used for, what can we do with it, and what are its limitations, when does it fail, when is it of no use to us, I have a video covering all of those things, the conceptual mathematics of the calculus of Newton's method. Uh, so go ahead and check that out if you, if you need that refresher or just some, uh, if you haven't seen this before because some of this will probably not make sense without that. It certainly won't make sense what exactly we're doing to approximate these values and these functions. So uh, that's also on this playlist on my channel. But if you don't need that review or you've already seen it, let's get started with this without any further ado. So let's approximate a pretty simple function. Let's, let's look at the function f of x equals x squared minus 2. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. And let's have an initial x1 uh, of ah, 2 sounds good to me. So uh, what do we need to do? Well, let's first recall the formula for Newton's method, which is xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus a rational here, f of xi over f prime of xi. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and figure out the derivative of this function here because uh, we're going to need it in a minute, and I don't want to break up that part, break uh, in the middle of that math to just take the derivative. That might be a little confusing. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. So this is a pretty simple function to differentiate. It is just x squared minus 2. So x squared minus 2 prime. This is a difference. We're just going to be using the difference rule here. The difference rule says the derivative of this minus the derivative of that. Sorry. The derivative of that is equal to the derivative of the whole thing. So we're just taking the derivative of each piece is all this little rule says. So let's take the derivative of each piece. Uh, what is the derivative of x squared? Well, we're just moving this 2 down in front. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x. And the derivative of negative 2, well, negative 2 is just a constant. And we remember c prime, or any constant prime, or the derivative of any constant is always 0. So we're subtracting 0 here, which just means that basically for the... Uh, purposes of what we're doing, we can just ignore it. We don't need to worry about it. Subtracting 0 means nothing. So our entire derivative for this function here is just 2x. So let's put this in our arsenal here on the side that f prime of x is equal to 2x so that we can go ahead and use that in a minute. Let's free up some of this space here so that we can work and try and be as coherent as possible in as little space as possible. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and compute our first iteration, which, since we were given x1, we're going to compute x2. So let's change colors and say x2 is equal to xi, which is x1, but instead of writing anything, let's just write parentheses so that we don't get mixed up. This won't save you time, but it will prevent mistakes, and that's always desirable. So x2 uh, equals parentheses for our x1 minus... Uh, this rational here, f of xi, which is just our original function here. So parentheses squared minus 2 over our derivative, which is right here, of course, uh, which is just two parentheses. All right, so a really nice derivative, a really simple original function. So this should be pretty clean, at least for a while. So. Uh, all right here. What are we going to plug in here for our xi? Well, this is x2, so we're going to be plugging in the value from x1, which is just 2. So we're going to put 2 in all of that. looks like a 3, doesn't it? We're going to put a 2 in all of these little parentheses here. And now we're just doing simple arithmetic. So x2 equals 2 minus, well, 2 squared is just 4, minus 4, minus 2, uh, over 2 times 2, which is 4. So this is just 2 minus, oh, come on. All right, 2, I can't write today, can I? 2 minus 4 minus 2, which is just 2 over 4. Well, 2 minus 2 fourths just equals 
3 over 2. So, ta-da, we have our x2. So our x2 is just equal to 3 over 2. So let's erase this and keep uh, our x2 over in our arsenal over here. So we can remember that it's 3 over 2. And we can write that down over here underneath our prime. We have x, uh, let's go back to white. We have that x2 equals 3 over 2. So, cool, we've got all that. Okay, now we're going to compute x3. We're only going to do two iterations of this function, which in this case means going up to x3. So there's not much uh, work to be done before we can be, we can be completed with this problem. So, all right, let's compute x3. So x3 is going to be equal to, uh, we're using our x2 this time for our xi, so parentheses, once again, let's just stick with that. That's probably the smarter idea. Minus, and we'll draw our rational here again, our f of x on top. So parentheses squared minus 2 and our f prime of x on the bottom, so two parentheses. Change our colors here for emphasis and write in our number. So we're going to be writing 3 over 2 in each of these little boxes, in these, these little parentheses here, so 3 over 2. All right, now, this math isn't difficult, but it's going to take a while to do all this kind of stuff, so I would just recommend plugging it into a scientific calculator, so I'm going to do that just to save us some work here. If you've made it to calculus, we probably don't need help figuring out how to uh, uh, subtract and add fractions here. So I'm putting in 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 squared minus 2 uh, over the bottom, 2 times 3 over 2. So we're going to come up with 17 over 12. All right, so this is our x3. So now that we're done, since we only care about doing three iterations, let's go ahead and take a decimal approximation with our calculator of this number, which is 1.4. One six, repeating on the six uh, for a while. Well, it's actually not repeating because we're actually going to end up hitting a seven. So six dot 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 would be more appropriate. So, all right, right here is our answer to this problem for our x three. So we'll put that over here in our packet of information on the right. Our x three is. 17 over 12, or approximated at this value. All right, so we're done. Now, isn't it interesting, though, how such a simple little polynomial function, I mean, f of x equals x squared minus 2, it's a very easy thing just to graph in your head. It's, it's pretty easy to play around with without doing much work. But when we apply Newton's method to it, even though it's such a simple function, just to approximate a value, we get these really ugly values, 17, 12, 3 over 2. You know, it's not clean. So uh, don't be disenchanted with Newton's method. If you don't always get clean answers, you're not going to. Um, but sometimes you will, of course. But in Newton's method is just a good way to approximate and get really nice approximations most of the time. And frequently those won't be clean. But you probably haven't made a mistake. It's just a, a common uh, phenomenon for them not to be very clean answers. So we're done. A quick recap. We use Newton's method to approximate the uh, value of f of x equals x squared minus 2 using an initial x1 of 2. We plugged everything into the Newton's method equation, or xi plus 1 equals xi minus f of xi over f prime of xi. We found our prime of the equation, which was just 2x. We plugged everything in. We did two iterations of that to get x2 values and x3 values shown here and here. And that's it. That's all there is to it.